somehow there's an expectation that government does it all. But that's not the case, and government can't. Um, so really it's about what the communities can do for themselves. I would have to admit that there are some places where women indeed don't have a voice. Um, they're impacted, just like women everywhere else that are impacted um, by disasters. The impact has been um, really reprioritizing uh, resources that we could be we could have been using for our own development, uh, and reprioritizing that to ensure that uh, we respond to those who need help the most. I think one of the challenges is that we don't um, engage women as effectively as uh, we we could, but I think um, we could uh, do much more. How Women's Weather Watch started, like with one Blackberry and, and a series of SMS messages, and, and them being able to write their messages and send and receive SMS messages, really showed that when you put technology into the hands of women, make it appropriate and accessible, um, you can do a lot. These are the community leaders um, across Fiji, across the Pacific region, and they've got to be involved. to train young women to be able to uh, find um, stories in the community and bring it together so that they could put it in a video documentary so we help them to write scripts, we help them to um, go to a community and identify issues and being able to share with a network that they could make short videos and share it back to the community to their leaders about what are the, some of the issues that are affecting them. Where I come from, um, there's this, uh, the field of decision making is always for um, the elders and mostly uh, men. Natural catastrophe do not select a certain gender to impact. It actually impacts everyone. And this is why women are very important in the discussion because they see the priority areas that sometimes, most of the times, our, our, the men refuse to see. 